please. And it is the Jerusalem Post. Report shows rise in restrictions on religion. Well, take a look at what's happened right here at home. Is TBN silencing God's prophets. Here we go. Michigan Televangelist storms off the network. Now, this next one tells you why. Van Impey Ministry abandons TBN and clash over Islam and the fact that he was challenging them over some leaders of apostasy. He wanted to speak about apostasy. And then, woo, take a look at this cover. National Review, quiet. That's Matt Crouch's <laughs> hand on my mouth, Rexella. <laughs> An assault on free speech. Well, you know, Jack, this was a, a decision that you made because you felt God wanted you to preach on some of the things that were happening, like Chrislam, combining the Islamic faith with Christianity. My, oh, my, this is something we must expose. And Jack wanted to do this and speak about apostasy also within some of the churches. So, Jack, that's why you stormed off that day. Oh, I will preach God's word the way God wants me to preach it. I won't listen to men. If I pleased men, I would not be the servant of God. So let God be true and every man a liar, Romans 3, 4. No one will ever tell me what to preach. I have spent years memorizing 15,000 verses, thus said the Lord, and nobody will silence me. And I would not go back to TBN for anything now that Paul has turned the ministry over to those two sons. And I feel sorry for those men there who have to work under these two guys in the future, believe me. They are not spiritual folks like their folks were when they started this ministry many years ago. But Rexella, let me say, I will preach, and I'm promising this to all my donors. I have received 7,000 emails from you. I will not fail you. You've begged me not to go on. It looks like this thing could go to 10,000 because they're still coming in, 50 to 100 a day. And think of it, 10,000 emails congratulating me for going off the event. I've never met so many people who are disheartened with this network. And I'm not going to go back. No, because I stand on the word. And old Paul got on there, Rexel, and he said, Rexel, you're a sweet little girl. Come on. He's one of these Belgian hardheads like I'm a German hardhead. Talk him into it. No, we both agree that God doesn't want us there. And I'd betray 7,000 families if I did go back on. And I will preach sin. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. Lust, when it's finished, bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death, James 1, 15. We need to preach against sin. And I challenged Olstein not long ago on this same network. You know, he said, well, I don't preach much on sin, except that all of sin comes short of the glory of God. Right. But what is coming short of the glory of God? Sin. What sin? Name your sins. 1 Corinthians 5.11, I challenge you mega church preachers to take this verse some Sunday morning and preach on it. You'll empty some of your churches, but you'll fill heaven. He said, if a man is called a brother, be a fornicator, covetous, idolater, railer, or a drunkard, or extortioner, don't eat with him until he repents. Boy, that would be some sermon. That's one time you'd have to give an invitation, Rick Warren, because the altars would be filled. Oh, my, oh, my, you know, that's what we need to be doing, isn't it? Restoring, reclaiming, and restoring biblical Christianity. Give the Bible biblical Christianity. We're going to talk about that more in just a moment. But we have a brand new offer, Chrislam, One World Religion Emerging. Take a look, please, at the preview. Today's video offer is undoubtedly the most powerful and undeniably the most insightful work the Van Empies have ever created. Why? It deals with the final sign pointing to the imminent return of Christ. Here's why. The Antichrist and false prophet cannot appear to control the world politically or religiously until the rapture occurs and believers are removed. Dr. Van Empey dogmatically and prophetically believes that June 26, 2011, was the beginning of the countdown to the most momentous event in history, Christ's return. On that date, churches met in 26 states to begin the union of Christianity and Islam. Called Chrislam, 
In this video study entitled, Prism, the One World Religion Emerging, Dr. and Mrs. Van Empey have documented the most shocking information ever taped, using over 30 political and religious leaders to back up and verify every word spoken, including Billy Graham, Robert Schuller, Rick Warren, President Obama, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, Oprah Winfrey, Shirley MacLaine, plus Jewish rabbis and Muslim clerics. What shocking statements did these celebrities make for or against Chrislam, the one world religion? You'll be shocked, stunned, and startled as you hear it. Order this video immediately if you want to know what in the world is going on politically and religiously as you examine Chrislam, the one world religion emerging. Friends, did you ever think you'd see this in your lifetime? Trying to combine the Islamic faith with Christianity. Chrislam, that's what it means. One world religion emerging. There's the 800 number and there's the address. You need to have this more than anything we've ever offered to you before. Make the call, please. And now I'm going to be going on with the burden that's been on Jack's heart. It was our last offer, Reclaiming and Restoring Biblical Christianity. Take a look, please, if you will, at this cover. That's what it was all about, and that's where he wants us to go. Reclaim it with Biblical Christianity. Religion. From the Herald of Hope. It is a magazine out of Australia. This is what they have to say. The new gospel is entertaining and adopts the world's music. Sermons are shortened. Worshippers are physically affected by the beaten hip sway. Faces are distorted in sanctimonious expressions. There is irreverence in services and casual dress is a must. A visitor would be forgiven for thinking it walked into a nightclub. The buzz of the new gospel is not the whole story. Along with the new excitement comes a lowering of standards. How? Alcoholism is no longer seen as an evil drug addiction. Sin is not rebuked. Ecumenical dialogue is encouraged with apostate cults and churches. There you see it. And second coming preachers are considered contentious. Oh my, oh my. Now, we're, I really appreciate this article. I've underlined about seven things I want Jack to give us a verse for. If you will, please, right. Jack. Amen. The first one. They use the world's music, that beat, you know. How about it, Jack? Oh, rock music and a church in Arizona just had Lady Gaga's music for the service. Where are the old hymns? I believe Ephesians 5.18, be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Let's sing about the old rugged cross the Lord. Amen. Oh, I'll say amen to that too, Jack. Well, the second thing that I underline about this article was irreverence in the services, Jack. They used to come to the church and sit there and pray for a while and get in tune with the Lord. Now they have a rock band blazing away and choreographed girls dancing in skimpy clothing. And Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, 9, that women are to adorn themselves in modest apparel, which becometh women professing holiness and godliness. And they're sitting there with their little lattes. And then they come out and saying, oh, wasn't it wonderful? Psalm 29, 2. We just worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. Bunk. All right, Jack, I'm <laughs> going to go on here with a lowering of standards. Alcoholism is no longer seen as a drug addiction. Oh, Rick, I want to deal with alcoholism. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I saw the birthday party for Paul Crouch, 75 years of age, and he said, tonight I retire and I turn the ministry over to my two sons. God help TBN. But then the son said, Dad, you look so good for 75. What's the secret? He says, I obey the book. Take a little wine for your stomach's sake. Brother, Crouch, I'm going to deal with alcohol like the world has never heard about it next week. I'm sick of these colleges like Cornerstone University in Grand Rapids and 10 or others they mentioned who said there's nothing in the Bible against drinking booze. Baloney! I'm going to give you 200 verses. One guy said, oh, in my day at our church they talked against playing cards and lipstick. Nothing in the Bible like that. Right! But there are 200 verses about liquor. Next week, don't miss it.
You know, Jack, so many people have a problem with alcohol. The Bible has the answer, and so does the Lord in their lives. Well, ecumenical dialogue. The new gospel is encouraging the ecumenical dialogue with apostate cults. You know, that's what Chrislam's all about, putting together Christianity and Islam, Jack, a dangerous thing. Oh, let's pray together over at Ground Zero or 9-11. No, you don't. Why? Because there are two gods to whom you pray. And my Bible says in Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I am Yahweh, the only God, and my Son is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, one more thing. Romans 16, 17 says, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ, and avoid them. Again, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, rebuke them, Ephesians 5, 11. And you know, they deny the father and son relationship because Allah didn't have any sons. Well, maybe he didn't. Yahweh God did. And whosoever denies the father and son relationship is an antichrist. 1 John 2, 22. How are you going to get along together? You can't. You know, friends, it is so wonderful to know the one way to heaven. Jesus came as the Savior of the world. He died as the Savior of the world. He'll forgive our sins. Some of you really have problems. Many of you, whether it might not be alcohol, but other things, the Lord can forgive and cleanse. Jack, will you give this wonderful invitation Amen. of accepting Amen. Christ, please? Some of you said, boy, you sound mad to I am. I'm mad to the devil in the devil's crowd. Be angry and sin not, Ephesians 4.26. Now, do you want this, Jesus? Do you want to live a holy life? Look at me, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, how you suffered for me, for all of us. I have sinned. I repent of my sin. I want you to come into my heart now, Jesus, and save me so I can be with you forever. I pray this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? I did when I was 17. Oh, I thank the Lord. Let me know if you did. There's my address. I'll send you this wonderful little book, First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord wants to walk with you as your Savior. Now, a brand new offer, Chrism One World Religion Emerging. Here's our announcer, Chuck. My friend, to order Chrislam, the One World Religion Emerging, on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. And now back to Rex Allen. Thank you so very much, Chuck. I am really excited about this brand new offer because it is so relevant to our lives, talking about a one world religion, the last thing that is to happen before the coming of the Lord. How wonderful to know that we can be looking up in a day like this. All right, there's my 800 number and there's the address. Call us or write to us. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. You know, with everything that we've been talking about today, I want to leave you with this good thought. If you're not as close to God as you used to be, guess who moved? How true. Amen. We're going to look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you so very much. And so do we. God bless you. Until then, bye-bye.